everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to find f of x given the function second derivative and a couple of initial conditions. To complete this problem, we'll take the integral of the second derivative to find the first derivative, then take the integral of the first derivative to find the original function, and then plug in our initial conditions. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to find f of x if f double prime of x is equal to 12x squared plus 6x minus 4, and given the initial conditions that f of 0 is equal to 4 and f of 1 is equal to 1. So our first step is to start with f double prime of x and start taking antiderivatives, right? We know that f of x is our essentially original function, f prime is its first derivative and f double prime is its second derivative, which means that if we're starting with f double prime of x, we'll need to take the integral of f double prime of x to get to f prime of x, the first derivative, and then take the integral again to get from f prime of x back to f of x. So let's start with the second derivative, f double prime of x, and say that that is equal to 12x squared plus 6x minus 4. Now, to find f prime of x, the first derivative, we need to take the integral of f double prime of x, which we know to be 12x squared plus 6x minus 4. And as with any integral, we need that dx notation there. So this is a simple polynomial integral. Remember that when we're taking the integral or the antiderivative of this function here, we're just going to use power rule. So to take the integral, we have x squared here. We're going to be adding 1 to the exponent. So 2 plus 1 in the exponent gives us 3. And then we divide the coefficient, 12, by the new exponent, 3. Same thing here with the 6x, right? So we have basically x to the first power, right? x to the first power. So we'll add 1 to the exponent. 1 plus 1 gives us 2. So we'll get x squared. And then we'll divide the coefficient, 6, by the new exponent, which is 2. Finally, we get to 4. And basically here we have 4 times x to the 0 power, right? x to the 0, or anything to the 0 for that matter, is equal to 1. 4 times 1 is just 4. This term is essentially, you can think of it as 4x to the 0. So it becomes the same then as the last two terms that we've done. So we have x to the 0. Again, we'll add 1 to the exponent. 0 plus 1 gives us 1. So there's our exponent. And then we'll take the coefficient 4 and divide it by the new exponent, which is 1. And as with any integral, whenever you take the integral, you have to go ahead and add what we'll call c, which is the constant of integration, to account for a constant that may have been in f prime of x that got lost when we took the derivative to get f double prime of x. So now that we have f prime of x, we just need to simplify. 12 divided by 3 here is 4, so we get 4x cubed. 6 over 2 will give us 3 x squared, and obviously this here just becomes 4x, and then we keep our c for the constant of integration. So that's f prime of x. Now we need to go ahead and get to the original function f of x. So to get f of x, we'll need to take the integral again of the first derivative function f prime of x. So we'll be taking the integral of 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus c, and again, that dx notation. So we'll do the same thing we did last time. For 4x cubed here to take the integral, again, we'll add 1 to the exponent. 3 plus 1 gives us 4. And we'll divide our coefficient 4 by our new exponent, 4. Same thing here. We've got x squared. We'll add 1 to the exponent to get x cubed. And then we'll divide the coefficient by the new exponent. For negative 4x here, we have x to the first power, so we'll add 1 and we'll get x squared, and then we'll divide the coefficient by the new exponent. c here is just a constant. This basically takes over the same form that the 4 had last time. This is c times x to the 0, or c times 1, because anything raised to the 0 power is just 1. So we add 1 to the exponent, and we get x to the first. The coefficient is c. c is just a constant, like any number here, just like 4 was up here in our original second derivative. So we get c divided by 
1. And because we took an integral again, we have to add another constant. But to distinguish it from the constant we added before, we'll call this one d instead of c. So now we need to simplify as much as we can. 4 over 4 gives us 1, so we'll just get x to the 4th. Again, 3 over 3 will just be 1, so we'll get x cubed. And then negative 4 halves gives us a negative 2x squared plus cx plus d. So this here is our original function f of x. Now all we need to do is use our initial conditions, f of 0 equals 4 and f of 1 equals 1, to find c and d, our constants. So the way that we'll do that, because these are both uh, the original function f of 0 as opposed to f prime of 0 or f double prime of 0, we're going to be plugging them into our original function here, f of x. So what this tells us to do is plug in 0 for x and set it equal to 4. So we'll say, and, and we'll be doing it here with this equation that we simplified for f of x. So we'll set it equal to 4 and plug in 0. So we'll get 0 to the 4th power plus 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 squared plus c times 0 plus d. And that'll be our first equation. We can simplify that, obviously, because we'll get all of these to cancel since they'll all be 0. And what we're left with here is 4 equals d. Now we need to use our second initial condition to solve for c. So we'll plug in 1 for x and set the whole thing equal to 1. So we'll get 1 equals 1 to the 4th power plus 1 to the 3rd power minus 2 times 1 squared plus c times 1 plus d. And what we'll get when we simplify this is 1 equals this will just be 1 plus 1 minus 2 plus c plus d. So simplify again. 1 plus 1 minus 2 is 2 minus 2. So these will all cancel with one another. And we're just left with c plus d. We already solved for d. Remember that we got d equals 4. So we can go ahead and make that substitution for d, and then to solve for c, we'll just subtract c from both sides, and we'll see that negative 3 is equal to c. So now we have solutions for c and d, and what we can do is plug them back into our original function to get our final answer. So our final answer for f of x will be f of x is equal to x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3, because we got negative 3 for c, minus 3x plus 4 for d, so plus 4. And that's it. That's our original function, f of x, given the second derivative, f double prime of x, and these two initial conditions. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.